Hey you guys, welcome back to math, it's Miss Patrick. Let's go ahead and jump in with our lesson for today. Our learning target for today is I can compare fractions with like denominators. What a mouthful. Let's talk about what that means. The first part says I can compare fractions. I've written some things up here to help hopefully jog your memory on some things you already know about comparing. When we're comparing two numbers, we make a comparison statement. Now comparison statements look just like this. You read them from left to right, just like how you would read anything else. Okay, so you put a one number here, usually your problem that you're looking at will give you that number. You put one number here and then you put a greater than, less than, or equal to symbol and your second number. So let's say I wanted to compare the number 10 and 20. If I said 10, I would say is less than 20. Now there's all sorts of tricks and things like that to help you remember which symbol means what, but as third graders, it's really important that we start to actually call these symbols by their real name. So this symbol is greater than. And one really quick thing to help you remember that it's greater than is the larger side of the symbol comes first. So the larger side of the symbol is actually going to point to the larger number. So if this is the larger number, it's going to say this number is greater than this number. The other symbol is less than. And on this one, the greater part of the symbol points this way, which would make this number less. So you would say this number is less than this number. Okay, 10 is less than 20. And then of course, this last one, which we practiced all last week, is equal to, this number is equal to that one. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that one. So that's comparing. Okay, so if we are comparing fractions today, we're gonna be figuring out which fractions are greater, which fractions are less, and maybe even some that are equal to each other. Okay, now the other part of that learning target is really important. It said, I can compare fractions with like denominators. Hmm. Let's talk about what that means. What is a denominator? That's right. It's the digit on the bottom of your fraction. It's the digit that tells you the size of your pieces or how many pieces you need to make one whole. It's the part of your fraction that names those pieces. So if I say, all right, um, my denominator is three, that means those pieces are thirds right? Because there, I need three to make a whole, and that fraction looks like this. So today, all the fractions that we're comparing are going to have the same denominator, which means the thing that's going to be different is the numerator. Now, the numerator is the part of the fraction that tells us how many pieces we're counting. Maybe we're counting the pieces of our model that are shaded. Maybe we're counting how many of those hops we took of our whole to get to that spot on the number line. Maybe we're counting how many equal pieces of pizza we ate. Whatever it is that we're counting, that number, that how many, goes in your numerator. So our numerators are what's gonna be different today. Now, whenever I teach this with my class, I always like to tell them, think about apples. Okay, so if I say I have six apples in this hand and I have three apples in this hand, well, which one's more? Six. Six apples are more than three apples. Okay, we're literally comparing apples to apples. Well, it works the same way with fractions. Okay, except instead of apples, we're going to have denominators. We're going to have these fractional pieces. And this will make more sense in just a second when we get started. Let's go ahead and look at our very first question. Our first question says, use greater than, less than, or equal to to compare one fourth and three fourths. Now for this first one, I'm going to use manipulatives to show you what these fractions actually look like, which means you can get your manipulatives out. If you made fraction bars, now's a great time to use them. Okay, so let's look, we have one fourth. So I'm gonna get out a one fourth piece and I'm gonna put it right underneath this fraction. All right, that's what one fourth looks like. Over here I have three fourths. It's still fourths. So that's what I mean when I say apples to apples. Here I have one fourth or one apple is kind of how you could think about the language in your head and three of the same thing, still fourths. So if I was thinking one apple and three apples, Obviously, we're not actually talking about apples, we're talking about fourths. But 
My point is our unit is the same. Either way, we have fourths. So let me just stop my rambling and put my fourths up here for you. Here we go. So this is three fourths. Well, if you think about it, just like with apples, one is less than three. So one fourth is less than three fourths. The how many in my fraction changed, but the name of the pieces I have, the how many I need to make a whole didn't change. I have fourths and fourths. So one is less than three. We could read this comparison statement just like this, again, from left to right. So it's gonna say one fourth is less than three fourths. Easy peasy, right? Let's do another one. And this time, instead of doing it um, with our fraction manipulatives, I'm gonna show you how you could model it with a drawing. So I'm gonna erase my board. And now we can look at our second problem. Our second problem says, compare these fractions, seven eighths and three eighths. I'm gonna go ahead and write these fractions down. Seven eighths and three eighths. I'm looking at my seven eighths and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna visualize what this looks like. And then I'm gonna think, okay, three eighths. All right, now hopefully you're already kind of thinking about wh what makes sense, which one is most likely more. But like I said, I am gonna draw you a visual model. I'm gonna draw a number line on this one. I like to use number lines when I'm comparing fractions with like denominators because I only have to draw one number line to compare these. I have eighths. I need a number line with eighths on it to draw this fraction. And I need a number line with eighths on it to draw this fraction. So I only need one number line. So real quick, I'm gonna get this number line drawn for you. And we've got eight. Now I'm going to find where these two fractions live. Let's start with 7 eighths. If I start here at 0, that's 0 eighths. 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths. All right, now let's look at this one. 3 eighths, okay? 0 eighths, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths. All right, now just like any other number line, our numbers get bigger as we go this way. So the number that is farthest down on the number line is going to be our largest number. So 7 eighths is greater than 3 eighths. So I'm gonna plug in my greater than symbol. 7 eighths is greater than 3 eighths. Easy peasy. And just like we talked about, it's apples to apples. We're comparing the same unit. We have eighths here and we have eighths here. So which is going to be more? Seven of them or three of them? Seven of them is going to be more. Makes sense, right? All right, one last problem to look at. So our last problem for today says put these fractions in order from least to greatest. And it gives us the fractions five sixths, two sixths, zero sixths, and six sixths. Now hopefully your wheels are already turning when you look at these fractions because you know what those fractions really mean. But let's think about it and let's use our logic that we've talked about today to order these fractions. Now if you're not there yet, use a model. You can use your fraction bars or you can draw a fraction model. Okay, but we're going to think about what we've talked about. Every one of these fractions are sixths. Okay, so the only thing that's changed in these fractions is how many sixths we have. So we have to put these in order from least to greatest. So which one of these shows the least amount of sixths? Zero. Zero sixths. So I'm going to put it first. I'm going to reorder my fractions. I'm going to put them down here. And I'm going to put zero six first. All right, well, that's the very least. Which one is just a little bit more than zero six, but less than the others? two sixths because two is less than five and six. Now we can do this again. We can do this because my denominator is the same the whole way. All right, so now we have five sixths and six sixths. Which one's gonna be more? 
five of them or six of them? Six of them is going to be more, which means five, six is going to come next and six, six is going to come last. And hopefully when you saw these numbers, you thought about, wait, Miss Patrick, we've already learned that six, six is equal to one whole and all the rest of these are less than a whole. So we knew that six, six had to be the greatest. All right. So that's how we're going to order fractions from least to greatest. You'll have some practice just like this, this week. Okay, work really hard on it. And if you have any questions, email your teacher. Don't forget to keep sending me pictures of you working on your fractions and drawing models. You'll see the pictures that I got this week at the end of my next video. All right, best of luck. Bye.